Written by Darcy Bustle Prologue In the soft, pale light, the girl stood with her head bent and her hands held lightly in front of her. There was a moment's silence and then the first notes of the music began. For as long as the girl could remember music had seemed to tell her of another world a magical, exciting world that lay far, far away. She always felt if she could just close her eyes and lose herself, then she would get there. Maybe this time. As the music swirled inside her, she swept her arms above her head, rose onto her toes and began to dance. 1. Ballet Class Slowly Holly sat upright on the sofa, her eyes never leaving the screen. She was watching the end of the ballet of Cinderella, her favorite bit. She caught her breath as the spring fairy leaped softly into a grand jeté, almost floating in the air, before landing gracefully. Holly leaned forward, her hands clasped tight together as she watched the dancer flutter and move with the lightest of steps. Then the credits went up. Her mother, a professional ballerina, had been dancing the role of the spring fairy. She's just the best, thought Holly, blinking back the tears. It had been so wonderful staying with Mum over the Christmas holidays and learning the steps to this very dance herself. But now it was January, and a new school term had started, so Holly was back living with her Aunt Maria and Uncle Ted while Mum was on tour with the ballet company. She liked her aunt and uncle, but it wasn't quite the same. Still, it wouldn't be long till half-term. Holly glanced at her watch and jumped up. She'd been so absorbed in Cinderella that she'd completely lost track of the time. She was due at Madame Zaza's ballet school in five minutes. She'd have to hurry if she was going to make it in time for class. Grabbing her ballet bag and throwing on her jacket, she rushed out into the cold air. And one in two in keep in time. Came Madame Zaza's voice, crisp and clear, as the girl sank down in their plies Holly felt a rush of happiness flood through her as she did what she loved most in the world. Push down into the floor as you straighten up. Nice work, Holly, called Madame Zaza. Holly's friend, Chloe, smiled at her as the class turned at the bar to do plies on the other side. Holly smiled right back. It was lovely to have a new friend up until last term, she hadn't really made any. Her parents had divorced over six years ago, and there had been a lot of moving around since. Her dad was a professional dancer as well, and, although Holly occasionally spent time with him, she was mainly with her mom or her aunt and uncle. Holly concentrated hard, as Madame Zaza instructed the class to move to the center. Use your eyes, girls. Feel the magic, said Madame Zaza, walking down the rows of students, tilting a head here or raising an arm there. As Holly checked her position in the ceiling-to-floor mirror of the studio, her eyes fell on her old red ballet shoes. They might look shabby, but they were really special. When she'd first been given them, she'd never imagined quite how special. They looked so ordinary, but they were a million miles from that, thought Holly, as she opened her arms from first to second position. For Holly had a special secret. Her ballet shoes were magic. Twice already they had whisked her away to the land of Enchantia, where all the characters from the ballets lived, and where Holly had the most incredible adventures. The class were working on a new position now, one that the fairy godmother held in the ballet of Cinderella. As Holly raised her leg behind her, trying not to wobble, Pictures of the characters she'd met in Enchantia whizzed through her mind, finishing with the white cat. She couldn't help breaking into a smile at the thought of him. Holly, are you daydreaming? Madame Zaza's sharp voice cut into Holly's imaginings. Your hand is drooping. You've lost your extension. Instantly, Holly snapped back to attention. How could she have let her position slip like that? She really needed to pay more attention. Rise up through your spines, girls. Holly's legs and arms were aching with the effort of holding the position, and she noticed a few girls letting go and sighing as they flopped forward. Lower the leg and close in fifth, instructed Madame Zaza, then after a few seconds she added, and relax. 
There were sighs of relief from all around the studio and someone even mumbled, it's impossible. But Madame Zaza didn't take any notice. It is important to keep the hip down, she went on, demonstrating the balance. Not like this. Even in the wrong position, Madame Zaza still looked wonderful and graceful. And now, girls, I shall give you a sequence of steps that the fairy godmother dances in Cinderella. Get ready to pay close attention. Pot a chat, pot a chat, chasse, degage. Brilliant, Holly thought, please there would be another opportunity to hold the balance at the end of the sequence. I'll try really hard to do it well. She started picturing herself with a nice straight supporting leg, but then realized Madame Zaza was talking again. Right, one row at a time, and we'll start with the front row. Holly went forward to take her position, feeling a flutter of panic in her stomach. She'd only taken in the first few steps that Madame Zaza had set, and now she had to dance the whole sequence. The music started and her eyes darted to the right as she tried to copy Chloe, but it was no good. She was falling behind the beat and her face was getting hotter and hotter under Madame Zaza's intense gaze. Her row didn't even finish the exercise before Madame Zaza clapped her hands and told them to stop. Holly, I won't tell you again about daydreaming in class. For a moment, Holly felt a flash of irritation, but she fought it off. Madame Zaza was right to tell her off. She should have been concentrating more. As the other rows each took a turn at the steps, Madame Zaza's corrections seemed to ring out more and more. Then she took a deep breath and said, Take a short break, girls. We will try again in a few moments. Some of the students went off to the toilets and others to the changing rooms. Holly hung back a bit because she wanted to try out the steps again, but Chloe took her hand and the two girls went outside into the corridor. I'll catch up with you in a sec, Holly told her friend, as she bent down to rub a dirty mark off her pale pink tights. As Chloe hurried off lightly, Holly suddenly noticed her ballet shoes. Was it her imagination or were they a brighter red than usual? They were sparkling. And now her feet had begun to tingle too. That could only mean one thing it was happening again. Right here. Right in the middle of class. She was on her way to Enchantia. 2. A special gift. A rainbow of colors began to swirl around Holly's feet and rose higher, lifting her up till she was spinning. She felt as though she was swirling through the air, until quite suddenly, she landed. The rainbow dissolved into sparkling silver and gold and she found herself inside a palace, at the edge of a grand hall. It wasn't the royal palace belonging to King Tristan and Queen Isabella that she had visited before. This one was quite different. The hall was buzzing with activity and there seemed to be all sorts of preparations going on. Servants were rushing back and forth from the kitchen to the hall carrying china dishes, silver cutlery, lacy napkins, elegant mats and sparkling glasses. Holly's eyes flickered to the wide archway that led through to the white and gold ballroom. The floor looked so shiny and the crystal chandeliers were glistening and twinkling. Flowers were being arranged in enormous vases fixed to the walls. What was going on? Oh, you're here. That's brilliant. Holly swung round to see her friend, the white cat, dancing over towards her. Cat, she cried in delight as they hugged each other. What's going on? she asked. Whose is this palace? Questions, questions, the white cat laughed. Well, first things first. The palace belongs to Cinderella and Prince Charming. And as for what is going on well, today is the christening of their little baby, Pearl. Look, here she is now. Come and take a peep. Holly followed the white cat to the beautiful lacy cradle tucked in a little alcove. Baby Pearl was wide awake, her blue eyes shining as she looked at the silver rattle she was clutching. Her favorite toy, said the white cat, throwing a smile at Holly. 
a small poppy suddenly hurtled by, wagging its tail and nearly tripping up one of the servants. Max, you naughty thing! Get out from under everyone's feet! The white cat chuckled. Prince Charming bought the poppy for Pearl for when she's older. Holly was confused. Usually the shoes brought her to Enchantia if there was a problem to help sort out, yet everything here seemed picture perfect. Although, when she looked carefully, she could see that some of the servants looked a bit worried. She turned to the white cat, raising her eyebrows. So what is going on? What do you need me for? Oh, Holly, we're all a bit fearful, he began gravely. You see, Cinderella can't put out of her mind the dreadful events that took place at the christening of her friend Princess Aurelia. Holly had met Princess Aurelia or Sleeping Beauty before and remembered her story, the wicked fairy, who hadn't been invited to Princess Aurelia's christening, had come anyway, crashing in furiously and wrecking everything with a curse about a spinning wheel. Of course, every precaution has been taken, the white cat went on. I mean, obviously none of the wicked characters of Enchantia have been invited to Pearl's christening, but that is a problem in itself. You see, if the wicked fairy finds out that the christening is taking place and she has not been invited again, who knows what evil she might wreak. Holly nodded thoughtfully. Everyone has been instructed to keep the ceremony top secret, but Dash the white cat shook his head anxiously, you never know. He leaned forward and spoke in a loud whisper. Can you keep an eye out for anything suspicious? Then, as quickly as his brow had furrowed, it cleared and he stepped back and smiled at someone approaching. Your Highness, this is Holly, the human owner of the magic shoes. Holly's eyes widened as a beautiful girl with golden hair swept up onto her head stood before her. Cinderella! Hello, Holly! Cinderella smiled. I'm so pleased to welcome you here. I'm pleased to be here. Holly smiled. And don't you worry, I'll be on the lookout. Thank you so much, said Cinderella, before rushing off to welcome more guests. It was so exciting, seeing the people of Enchantia at the christening. Everyone had a gift for Baby Pearl, and now that they were all set out on the creamy tablecloth of the ceremony table, Holly took a closer look. There was a sparkling fan, a charm bracelet, tiny white slippers with hand-sewn sequins, a beaded purse, and many other lovely things. There was just one gift left, wrapped in the shiniest paper of all, that hadn't yet been opened. Just at that moment, Cinderella arrived at the table, looking worried. Have you seen my fairy godmother, White Cat? I can't understand why she's disappeared all of a sudden. I'm sure there'll be a perfectly ordinary explanation, Your Highness, said the White Cat. Maybe she's just flown off to get something and will be back at any moment. Yes, I'm sure that must be it, said Cinderella. And this must be her present. Cinderella's hand gestured towards the unopened present. And that was when Holly noticed the white cat's whiskers twitching. She frowned and felt her heart beating a little faster. The white cat's whiskers only ever seemed to twitch when magic was afoot. Could something be going on? As soon as Cinderella headed off, Holly turned to her friend. What is it, white cat? I noticed your whiskers just now. I have absolutely no idea why they should be twitching. It's almost confusing. Just then, some majestic music struck up and the white cat clapped his paws happily. Oh, my glittering tail! The dancing has begun. My own dance is not till later on in the ceremony. I can't wait, he added, doing a light bounce into the air, crisscrossing his feet neatly, which made Holly smile, as Cinderella came rushing back in. Prince Charming says I should open the fairy godmother's gift, she cried excitedly. The rest of the guests gathered round and the music faded into the background. Holly, too, rushed forward. If she had been brought here to Enchantia to help look out for spinning wheels and the like, then she